Welcome back, everyone. We are excited that you're back with us for our doctrinal focus. This week, we're going to be diving into the role of the wife. I know Carl Amick did a great job last week uh, discussing the role of the husband, and this week we're going to jump into the role of the wife. And so if someone asked you, what does God expect of you as a wife or as the husband, what should you uh, expect from your wife, what would you say? Uh, and as a wife, I would ask, who has been the most influential person in your life to shape you into the wife that God has called you to be? And then the third question I would ask is, do you know what uh, is expected from God of you as a wife? Uh, do you know what God's design is for your role in your, in your marriage? So today we're going to examine from Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, God's divine design for the role of the wife. And so the, the first item there on your handout, if you have it in front of you, says God's design for his influence in the marriage. And so we have to have this aspect right first before any others. And if you have your Bibles open, I hope you do, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verse 18 through 21, it says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And so for us, in order to, to really get a good understanding of our roles in, in a marriage, we First, must look at verse 18 and what it tells us that we must be filled with the Spirit. And because we are filled with the Spirit, the Spirit will produce things in us and through us that help our marriages. And so verse 19, we can see that uh, there's three fruits here, uh, verse 19 through 21. And the first one we see in verse 19 is a life of praise. So if we're filled with the Spirit, we're going to have a life or a fruit um, of praise in our in our lives and in our marriages. The second thing we see is in verse 20. It talks about a life of thankfulness. Uh, if we're filled with the Spirit, we should be uh, thankful that, uh, you know, for the, the many blessings that God has placed in our lives. And even in the, the, the hardships of life, we can still find reason to be thankful because of our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, the third thing that we see as a fruit that's produced, if we're walking in the Spirit or filled with the Spirit, uh, verse 21 says that we will have a life of submission. You see that there, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And so before anyone can be what God expects them to be, whether that's the husband or the wife, they first must be under the control of the Spirit, who will fill them with praise, thankfulness, and submission, then and only then, can the husband or wife be what God has called them to be in their marriage? And so the second thing today is that, that God's design for the wife. So we see that God has a design for the influence, which is his spirit, but God's design for the wife. Um, letter A there, the woman is to be the support or to be a support to her husband. When we think about this, um, why the first wife was created. And if you've read through the Genesis account, you, you see as God created everything, at the end of it, he said it was very good. Now each, uh, at the end of each day of creation, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 10, verse 12, verse 18, verse 21, verse 25, and verse 31, it says that everything was very good. Yet in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God said one thing was not good. And what was that? And it was that man's loneliness. It was that man was alone and his need for a mate. And God said that was not good. And so God created woman to be the helpmeet to her husband or for her husband. And this idea of the word um, that, of help is to supply that which the individual cannot provide for himself. And so meat carries this idea of being opposite of man. And that the wife is to be a complement to him. So the lack of the woman with the first man caused God to say that it is not good for man to be alone. 
Something is missing, basically, is what God said here for the man. And that man is lacking a counterpart. And so God's plan was that Adam and Eve would become one flesh, as you see there in Genesis chapter 2, uh, and meet each other's emotional needs and social needs and their physical needs. And so if Adam, who was perfect in the beginning, when God created him before sin came in, he was perfect in the beginning, yet he was not sufficient without the woman. And so how much more us men today that are sinful, that uh, since the fall of man, uh, how much more do we need our wives today? And so the wives, wives, your husbands need you. Um, They need your support. What are uh, ways a wife can show support for their husbands? And as you're sitting here looking at the video this week, you may be asking, what is one way that I can show support for my husband? Uh, One way of a single, I would say the one single greatest influence um, in the husband's wife, in the in the in the husband's life, is his wife. Um, In my life, outside of Jesus Christ, my wife has the greatest influence on my life outside of Jesus Christ. Uh, The weight of the impact that a that a wife has on her husband cannot be overstated. For husbands. For a husband and a father to lead their family successfully, they desperately need the support of their wife. They need encouragement from their wives. Can a wife in many ways either make or break their husbands? And the answer is yes. And in many ways they can make or break their husband. Uh, When a man knows that his wife uh, is fully behind him and is supporting him and is encouraging him and respects him, uh, that can greatly affect his ability to lead his family. Um, and it's just opposite of that as well. How can it affect a husband if their wife is constantly opposed to him? Um, questioning him at every turn uh, with a negative or a discouraging attitude uh, towards any decision he makes. Um, and I heard a pastor say this once. He said, uh, I cannot fight the devil and my wife at the same time. And uh, it's, it's very true. Uh, that, that husbands and, and wives need each other, and husbands need the encouragement from their wife uh, and, and the support of their wife. Which brings me to letter B on your handout today. The wife is to be in submission to her husband. We see that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 and 24. And, and the wives are to submit to the leadership and authority of their husbands as unto who in verse 22? And you see, if you have your Bibles there, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And so it, it's, it's as if you're submitting unto the Lord because the command is the Lord's. A wife who will not submit to and honor her husband's leadership as a wife is then who is disobedient to who? You're being disobedient to the Lord. The, the wife that is not obedient to the husband is disobedient unto the Lord as well. And Paul uses this great example in verses 23 and 24. It's the, 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 the relationship that he displays here is, is of, of Christ and the church. And, and Christ is a picture of the husband. And the church is the, the picture of the bride of Christ. And, and there's this mutual submission there. And, and Christ, being the husband, uh, did a sacrificial um, love for the church. He died for the church, and, and, and the church was to respect and reverence Christ. Um, and so, and how many things should the wife submit to the husband according to verse 24? And according to verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. And so the, the question there is how, or what, how many things should the wife submit to the husband? That's in accordance to everything. And so what does submission mean? That's, that's an important thing to get a hold of as, as we're unpacking this because our world today um, sees that as, as an offensive thing and in a culture that we live in to say that the wives should be submissive to the husband. And there's a, a negative connotation to that according to our world standards. But we don't, as Christians, base our standards upon the world. We base it upon the word of God. And so what does this submission mean? And essentially, it does not mean inequality. It, it, I'll say that again. It doesn't mean inequality. 
realize that the authority and, su and submission do not mean inequality, but rather they're, they're different functions or responsibilities of the wife from the husband. Um, we are all equal in the sight of God. Listen to Galatians 3.28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And so what does this word submission mean? Um, it comes from a Greek word, uh, as in a military terms, it means to arrange or uh, troops in a division in a military fashion under the command of a leader. Um, it's meant to line up under. In a non-military sense, it was used as a voluntary attitude of giving in um, or cooperating or assuming responsibility and carrying a burden. Um, it is the idea of humility in meekness. So the wife is under the loving, caring leadership of her husband is the picture here. And in no way does this mean that the wife is inferior to the husband, uh, and, but rather it speaks of a function of ranking, not an inferiority of the person. And so the next question that often comes up in, in uh, these discussions of the role of the wife and the role of the husband is, what if my husband will not lead? What if he's, you know, God has designed the husband to be the leader of the home? And oftentimes, they, they, they're not doing that. They're not demonstrating that. And so oftentimes, we get those questions, that is what if my husband won't lead? What should I do? And I would encourage this. Uh, encourage him for what he is doing right. You know, uh, pray for him. Do not continually to, to criticize him for what he's doing wrong, but rather um, encourage him for what he is doing right and pray for his growth in areas that he's lacking. Secondly, make sure that you're giving him the opportunity to lead. Uh, sometimes wives can complain about their husbands not being the leader of the home, yet they haven't given them an opportunity to step up and, and to lead that family. Um, instead, they can trump the authority of the husband time and time again. And so maybe sometimes it's just taking a step back and giving them that opportunity to lead. Another question that comes up often in, in these discussions of the role of the husband and the role of the wife is, what if my husband's not a believer? What do I do then as the wife? And we don't have time to do it, but I would just encourage you this week to, to go through and read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. And according to Peter, wives should be submissive to their husbands if they are not saved. Uh, and, and so what Peter's saying here is that by doing this, the wife can cause an unbelieving husband to become a believer by their conversations and by their conduct and how they live out their lives. Um, again, you could also read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13 through 16 this week as well to get some, some understanding on how um, by living the godly life that God has called you to, by your conduct, by your conversations, that you can be a good testimony to your husband who is not saved, and that would be one that would lead him to the Lord. Um, there's, a, there's a Christian apologist, Lee Strobel, and his wife was that way. She got saved first, and he was an atheist. He wanted nothing to do with God. But by her conduct and her conversation, um, he initially set out to refute Christianity because he didn't sign up for that. But because of her testimony and, and then his investigation into the Christian faith, it led him to be saved. And so wives just know that sometimes um, it may seem like your unsaved husband uh, may never get saved, but just know that your conduct and your conversations can win them over. And there's testimonies of that, of ladies in our church that because of their conduct and because of their conversations um, and through prayer for their husbands that were not saved, their husbands are now saved. And so a last question that typically comes up oftentimes in these discussions of the role of the husband and the wife is, what if they want me to be involved in something that is sinful? Uh, especially if they're not saved, what do you do then? Are you to be submissive to your husband and, and, and follow that? And, and the answer is that you're to answer to the highest authority. You're always to honor the highest authority, which is God. 
Um, so if the, if the husband is asking the wife to, to do something sinful, um, you're not to cave into that. You're, the highest authority is God, and you're to follow um, that authority. And so that is the, the time when you decide at that point, um, I cannot participate in that sin. I am a child of God. He is ranked higher in authority than my husband, and I'm going to follow through in following God's commands. I mean, it is never the right thing to disobey God. Um, but God is the head of the family. And as he's placed the husband to lead the home, but if your husband is leading the home into sin, you follow God. Letter C is having the right spirit. Again, we don't have time for those verses, but this week, look those verses up. Um, and having the right spirit, again, is, is crucial. We talked about that at the beginning. You must be filled with the spirit. And you, as, a, as a wife, you have to have the right spirit. And as a husband, he has to have the right spirit as well. And so these verses are just really good verses. Um, so what does God say is of a great, great price according um, to him in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4? And, and that is the right spirit of the wife. It says, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of uh, plating the hair or of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meekness and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So it, you see that there. It's a meek and quiet spirit. God, God values that. And likewise, God also... Um, as he exalts the meek and the gentleness of a woman. On the other hand, God has a lot of things to say about a loud and argumentative and contentious woman. As you read through Proverbs, Proverbs 7, 11, Proverbs 9, 13, Proverbs 25, 24, and Proverbs 27, 15, um, all speak of, of God's view on um, a, a loud and argumentative and contentious woman. Um, and so he, in Proverbs 25, 24, it says, It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. Um, and so lastly today, wives are to respect their husbands. We see that in verses 22 and uh, verse 33 of Ephesians chapter 5. Um, have you as a wife ever told your husband that you respect him? Or do your actions... Um, ever display that you respect your husband. And, and oftentimes wives will say, well, I'll respect him when he respects me, or um, when he shows me love, I will respect him. Um, God made man and woman with different needs. Women need to know that they are loved by their husbands. And men need to know that they're respected by their wives. And oftentimes if a man's not showing that he loves his wife, the wife then will not respect the husband. And then this leads to that spiral that never seems to be ending, and he won't give out love because he doesn't feel respected. Um, and so there has to be a, a balancing there somewhere where, where the husband feels that he is respected and starts to give in and, and show his wife love. And, and likewise, the, the husband needs to love his wife in order for her to show that, he respe for her to show that she respects him. And so how important it is, it, is it for your husband to know, or how important is it for you to know that your husband loves you? Ladies, it is very important. You want to know that. You want that affirmation. You want to know that he cares for you, right? He cherishes you. Um, in the same way, a wife desires these loving affirmations from her husband. The husband needs to know that his wife respects him, honors him, and believes in him. Notice how God summarizes this at the end of Ephesians as he's addressing the, the, the family here, uh, especially the husbands and wife. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33 says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife as himself. So he's telling husbands, love yourself, or love your wife as you love yourself. Uh, as a default nature for men, we love ourselves, we care for ourselves, we take care of our flesh. And he's telling the husbands, hey, as you love yourself, you need to love your wife. And then he goes on to say, and the wife see that she reverences or respects her husband. And so wives need to love, and husbands need to respect. 
a wife who pours out disrespect to her, her husband will be a, a, a wife that is, uh, who lives without being loved. I'll say that again. Wives need love. Husbands need respect. A wife who pours out disrespect to her husband will be a wife who lives without being loved. I know that this isn't uh, a popular topic in our day and age, um, but what I can tell you is that, that God's word is true. And when you take the scriptures and the truth of scriptures and you apply it to your life, it is phenomenal. Um, even to a non believer, if the husband and the wife are living this out, it is apparent that the, that the wife is like a well-watered plant in the desert. In the day and age in which we live in, if the husband's loving his wife like Christ loved the church, and she's reverencing her husband like the church did for Christ, and then that picture there, no one can doubt it. No one can say, oh, that's, you know, that's not right. Um, that, that's oppressive. Um, the world systems are oppressive. They are putting us in bondage, and we must know that Satan is the enemy that has attacked every institution that God has started. Think about that. The first institution God started was the family. And then Genesis chapter 3, Satan comes on the scene, and he attacks the family. God institutes the government. Uh, Satan has attacked that. Um, God institutes the church. Satan is attacking against that. So know that you have an adversary, the devil, who walks around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Um, and, and so just apply these truths of the scriptures to your life and to your marriages, and it will be profoundly different. And it may not be overnight that these things happen, but just know that as you show respect to your husband, he will feel that he, he is respected and he will show love. And, and so hopefully, again, these have been a, a great tool for you. And uh, we look forward to next week hearing the role of, of both parents and raising the children in the home. Thank you. Have a great day. God bless.